In this lesson, we'll continue our review of problem solving and data analysis concepts. We're in the official PSAT practice test, section four, calculator permitted, question 19. Boyd grows only tomatoes and raspberries in his garden. Last year, he grew 140 pounds of tomatoes and 60 pounds of raspberries. This year, the production by weight of tomatoes declined by 20% and the production by weight of raspberries declined by 50%. By what percentage did the total yield by weight of Boyd's garden decline? So we have a couple of different years. Let's start with last year. We know he grew two types of fruits, right? Tomatoes are fruit. And those were tomatoes and raspberries, 140 and 60. And get in the habit for this type of question because it's asking for the percentage decline of the whole garden. Put the total out here. You need that for this problem, so it's 200. Now let's do this year because there were some changes from last year to this year. This year, production of tomatoes declined by 20%. So decline by 20%, we multiply that by 0 0.8. So 140 times 0 0.8, it's 112. All right, so we know that tomatoes down to 112 this year. Raspberries declined by 50%. We can see this in our head, that's half. So this declined to 30, and again, put the total of these two numbers out here, it's 142. This is where you need these totals. And now the question is asking, by what percentage did the total yield decline? Anytime you're doing percentage increase or decrease, the first step is what is the original starting value before any change? It's 200. And that number, think about it as the base number, the starting point. It's also the, the base of the ratio. So we're gonna put it on the bottom, the 200 on the bottom. Then you have to be careful because it's asking for percentage decline. It's not 142 on the top, it's how much it declined by. And so it's the difference. 200 down to 142, we put a 58. And you don't need a negative sign because it's asking for decline. And so this is our ratio. And you could use your calculator, but if we divide both sides in half, we get 29 over 100, which we know to be 29%. And that's the answer. So be careful, percentage increase or decrease, starting value on the bottom, and then the change, whether it be an increase or decrease on the top. All right, one more question in this video. It's question 20. The graph above shows the frequency distribution of a list of randomly generated integers between 0 and 10. What is the mean of the list of numbers? So just to review, we know that mean, that's the same as the average, can be defined as the total or the sum of all terms divided by the number of the terms. And what makes this problem a little confusing is we have the frequency in numbers, but the integers are also numbers. They're not actual terms. So it could be a little confusing. Just be careful here. Let's first get the sum of all the numbers. All right, so here we'll start with zero. Now zero has no sum. And so even though it appears one time, the sum is still zero, right? The sum of one, one times one is just one. The sum of two, there's just one two, is gonna be a two. Here though, three, we've got three, so that sum is nine. Four appears twice, so that sum is eight. No fives. Six appears once, so that's six. Seven appears once, that's seven. Eight is just once. No nines and a 10. And now we just, this is the sum. We could use our calculator or we could just be careful. Let's just try and do it. So we know this is 10. 6, 7, and 8 is the same as 3, 7. So that would be 21 plus the 10. Now we're up to 31. And let's take this 9. Again, you could just use your calculator. I'm just trying to do it the manual way. And that's going to be 40. And this is 8. So that is 48. And we've got 3 more. And so that's 51. I think I did it right. You could use your calculator, but that's the sum of all the numbers, 51. Now we've got to count how many terms there are. And so again, it's a little confusing because we have numbers on both of these axes. So let's get the terms now. All right, so now we're just counting the number of terms. Zero does count, it appears once, so that's one term. Here, we have one term. Here, 
we have one term. So these are all one. Three though p appears three times, so there are three of these. Four appears twice, so there are two of those. No fives. Six appears once, so that's a one. Seven appears one. Eight appears one. No nines. And 10 appears one. And so these are the total numbers of terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So just be careful. And now we can just take our calculator and find out that looks to be a little over four. 4.25 and the answer is C.